Climate Justice as an Anti-Corporate Economic Mobilization by Stefan Ger Garsmund Jacobson. A few years introduction, a few years ago, after the most extensive week of climate protests in history during the UN Climate Chain Climate Summit in Copenhagen, COP15, two leading figures of the coalition behind the protests looked back thinking that their movement had failed to establish an anti-capitalist CJ climate justice discourse that was visible and understandable beyond the subcultures of activists and policy wonks, and thus failed to provide a visible alternative to despair, failed to establish a new pole of attraction, unquote, that would substantially reconfigure the political field around climate change and failed to do anything to significantly advance the fight for climate justice. In some sense, the global CGM, CJM climate justice movement remained something more of a potential rather than a reality. Bullard and Mueller, 2012-57. If attracting activists and grassroots support from all over the world to debates and large street gatherings, while most completely disrupting the UN negotiations, was not enough, the quotation signals the, the extreme ambition of this global CJM. The People's Climate Summit, unquote, in Co Cochabamba in 2010, had seen the demands of CJ protesters adopted by South American state leaders gathering thousands of people to discuss a radical agenda and only two years away was the 2014 People's Climate March would break all previous records for mass climate protests. In terms of numbers and friends, CJ was on the rise. Central figures to the CJM, like Mueller and Bullard, whose ambition was much larger than simply mobilizing resistance to the COP meetings were left feeling that the movement was lacking and insufficient in validating their ambitions. In fact, the development of the CJM from the late 1990s until 2009 had imbued activists and campaigners with a feeling of real progress in mobilizing for an anti-corporate and democratic global economic agenda to stop climate change. This chapter claims that genealogy of the concept of CJ what, as an activist tool can explain why radical economic demands form the core of many activists' approaches to CJ and why more reformist economic programs gradually replace these demands. The CJM has been recognized has been recognized and analyzed as part of the global deliberations on climate change in the fields of international political economy and political ecology, Roberts and Parks, 2009, Newell and Peters, Patterson, 2010, Parks and Roberts, 2010, Hadrian Versteeg, 2012, Martinez Elier, ETL, 2014, Leach and Sc Schoons, 2015. My claim, however, is that more attention to the development of economic ideas taking place within the movement provide important new insights into dynamics of climate politics from both a historical and a contemporary point of view. The aim is to trace the role of economic issues, demands, and ideas debated during the 1990s and to explain how these relate to subsequent popular mobilization for CJ globally. I do this in two steps. First, by locating these issues in widely debated publications central to the first definitions of climate change used for mobilization and political critique. Second, by tracing these debates in the political statements resulting from activist summits and gatherings in the name of CJ. However, while drawing on the thorough studies of the development of the movement, Bond 2012, Toker 2014, I, remained I remain narrowly focused on innovations and conflicts over the problem, as stated by Mueller and Bullard above, of creating galvanizing economic strategies and alternatives at the global level.
This means that I am focused on the development of what political economist Bob J Jessup has called economic and ecological imaginaries, unquote, as part of understanding the cultural sense making in debating economic alternatives that are both galvanizing for global mobilization and realistic solutions. In the face of climate science, Jessup, 2012, I approach this set of problems by the way by way of a conceptual and discourse analysis of the economics, logic, and global strategy, Kolselec, 2002, Dreisig, 2013, Jacobson, ETL, 2017. This implies a close attention to the actual concepts used by actors, how they are utilized, and in which culture and political context they st simulated, I'm sorry, stimulated debates and struggle rather than applying these applying theories that see climate globalization as inherently prone to depoliticizing <clears throat> or utopianism. I analyze the CJ economic programs as an ongoing constructive arena for tackling the problem of depoliticization of global po political economy. While main parts of this of the chapter's history, historical anal analyzes are focused on e economic debate since 1999, when CJ was first used as a concept by campaigners. Two previous inputs are central to understanding subsequent developments. The first is the report, Global Warming in an Unequal World, a Case of Environmental Colonialism, published in 1991 by Delhi based think tank Center for Science and Environment, CSE. While there is wide agreement in the literature on the conceptual framework in the report, I highlight specific economic critiques that become became part of the CJM in the late 1990s, of which the resistance to carbon trading became most salient to subsequent debates. Second, a summit of the, of the people of color environmental leadership Postel, second, a summit of the people of color environmental, I'm sorry, leadership. Also in 1991, moved the hitherto hither localized struggles for environmental justice to glo a global arena, providing a link between urban activists and ind indigenous groups in North and South America. As the CJM took shape in the early 2000s, this summit's declaration became an explicit model for post posing justice claims in the face of climate change, making the context and con content of the document important for analyzing the ways in which more holistic and systematic economic notions of CJ were debated in subsequent decades. From the outset, I focus on the invention of CJ as a concept for radical climate change mobilization. Apart from sporadic academic theories mentioning the concept of CJ, the late 1980s, 1999, was the first year it was used and defined as a, the focal point of grassroots organization and, on climate issues. The context was the publication of the report, Greenhouse Gangsters versus Climate Justice, unquote by the San Francisco-based organization Transitional Resource and Action Center, TRAC, and its subsidiary resource office, Corporate Watch. Campaigners of, from these organizations took a pivotal role in the protest against the politics of the COP6 meetings in 2000. In The Hague, inspiring the radical grassroots networking rising tide RT to adopt both the concept of CJ and its economic underpinnings in their statements. I analyze and contextualize subsequent political statements that emerged from activist gatherings that explicitly sought to explain, expand the CJ program and resulted in the formation of a number of networks and initiatives. I analyze how the central pr presence of economic demands began to diverge and transform in a different direction while retaining core phrases and demands going back to 1999. The role of this economic CJ became increasingly conflictual ahead of the 2009 COP15 in Copenhagen, with CJ demands exposing the continued inefficiency and cynicism of the negotiators from the global north.
From a moment of crisis, economic demands diverged dramatically away from the focal point, main focal points of preceding economic CJ debates. While the 2010 People's Summit in Cochabamba intermixed anti-capitalist CJ ideas with both a socialist and indigenous framework, North America American NGOs converged around emerging campaigns for divestment the International Trade Union Confederation, ITUC, emerged among radical demands re reinterpreting the notion of a, quote, just transition, which, although part of the or original definition of CJ in 1999, has become a vehicle for what I call a de -radical radicalization of economics CJ demands. I conclude by briefly discussing whether this tendency toward de -radical radicalization should be interpreted as a brief hiatus for radical CJ demands or a more permanent approach to grassroots climate activism, climate commons, and climate markets. In 1991, leading Center for the Science of and Environment, CSE analyst, analyst Anil Ar Ar Agarwal, and Sinuta Nur Narain were taking stock in the 1980s UN focused debates, stating that the concept of sustainable development demands that human beings collectively do not produce more carbon dioxide and methane than the Earth's environment can absorb. The question was how this global common, the global carbon dioxide and methane sinks, be shared amongst the people of the world. Unquote. This was before the establishment of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. In 1992, however, the report, in their report, the unequal historical starting point did not provide CSE with any reason for optimism. How can we visualize any kind of global management in a world so highly divided between the rich and poor, the poor, the powerful and the powerless, which does not have a basic element of economic justice and equity. The background to this claim was the recent publication of reports on climate change and by U.S.-based World Resource Institute, WRI, and Brussels-based International Energy Agency, which both presented database climate scenarios that placed the main burden for cutting greenhouse gas GHG emissions on the developing world, IBID, making no distinction between poor countries' survival emissions and rich countries' luxury emissions, the WRI calculations was hiding an immoral stance, according to CSI. This led to the authors to mock the newfound interest in the so-called Our Common Future and Future Generations, referring the UN Brundtland report from 1987 and to alert third world environmentalists, unquote, not to get taken for a ride by this highly partisan one worldism. Instead, the world leaders had to propose an agenda that responds to, econo to the economic, political, cultural, and resource realities of the third world, unquote. The opposition to this path was identified as a form of Western environmentalism, unquote, that might be keen to discuss green economics, but less able to make the political leap to dealing with the true co cost, unquote, of rich countries consumption. Thus, the re relations between the North and South was taken to be inherently conflictual on questions of economy and resources. Concretely, Naran and Argawal claimed that the WRI allowed no distinction between the countries which have eaten up these ecological capital by exceeding the world's absor absorptive capacity and those countries which have emitted gases well within the world's cleansing capacity. To correct this, CSE presented detailed data under to underpin a model for per capita GHG allowances given to historical inequalities. This would amount to the ability to share the atmosphere's GHG sink as a global common, 
should be shared equally on a per capita basis, unquote, which in turn was argued by the only way to aspire to lofty ideals like global justice, e equity, and sustainability. In practical terms, CSE proposed a trending scheme for permissible emissions given the size of remaining global GHG sinks. Citing the literature on the tragedy of the commons, unquote, to support a market-based solution. The CSE report presented an argument for historical responsibility of rich countries, which became both academically cited, Shu 1993, and politically negotiated by the main NGO climate hub, Climate Action Network, can. In the late 1990s, without gaining support of, in the UNFCCC, Hayden, 2015. However, whereas the CSE had presented historically calculated per capita GHG permissions and markets as a package in 1991, Argawal later stated that carbon trading was perhaps an obstacle for zero carbon transition rather than a solution to the global warming problem, unquote. Significantly, the economic notions of market-based solutions and disproportionate historical capita rights became the two opposite poles for the CIM in 1999. Globalizing Environmental Justice. In 1991, more than 600 delegates for most parts of the U.S. and Canada gathered from the POSEL, building on local environmental struggles among Black and Hispanic groups in the U.S., as well as Indigenous groups in South America. The summit was more pragmatic Pragma I'm sorry, I can't say that word. Pragmatic, <laughs> programmatic, and universal. Sorry about that. The summit was more pro. Okay, and universal in its character, resulting in 17 point principles of environmental justice and a brief declaration of cooperation. The summit created a platform for providing a critical language as well as a tentative political pro program and strategy. The historical context of 1991 summit reflects an ambition to organize and around environmental justice and a critical stance towards a perceived underlying structural racism in the approach of the group of 10, unquote, main U.S. environmental organizations. A closer analysis of the overall framing and content and of the declaration reveals an emphasis on critical economic issues. The declaration's brief preamble explains the necessi necessity of a new coalition based on environmental justice in order to work to reestablish our spiritual interdependence to the sacredness of our Mother Earth, to respect and celebrate each of our cultures, languages and briefs, beliefs about the natural world and our roles in healing ourselves to ensure environmental justice to promote economic alternatives which would contribute to the development of environmentally safe livelihoods and to secure our political, economic and cultural liber liberation uh, that has been denied for over 500 years of colonization and oppression. The coupling between spiritual beliefs and a new economic direction is striking and represents a break with both radical economic thinking and mainstreamed environmentalism of the time. Very generally, the approach juxtaposes the potential economic and cultural liberation with the existing economic models guiding a, colonizing, a colonized world system. Clearly, this approach is in many aspects compatible with the notion of, quote, environmental colonialism, unquote, suggested as a framework by CSE. Nonetheless, the approach of the in the principles is not referring to traditional methods, unquote, of production and survival emissions, unquote. In the more technical ar argumentation of the latter, but pursuing a much more profound approach, as f such, the first principles underline, again, the sacredness of Mother Earth, expanding the consequence to include interdependence of all species and the right to be free from ecological destruction.
Other principles alternate between substantial sustainability and justice for either all people, all peoples, the planet, or all living things, unquote. But the general coupling between recognizable political struggles of land use and health care, unquote, remain intertwined with bro the broader environmental and spiritual concerns. Several points uh, the principles mirrored. The central role of were economic alternatives and economic liberation, unquote, concerning both material conditions in question of land use and renewable resources, but also in the economic... Sorry, pages are sticking together this morning. Self-determination of people and the rights of all workers for a safe and healthy work environment. Identifying a com common enemy, Principle 14 states that the environmental justice opposes the destructive operations of multinational corporations. The latter aligns the delegates' approach with the alter-globalization movements critique of corporate power during the 1990s. However, while a number of the points about local sovereignty seem radical in terms of political economy, the 17th and final point of the declaration provides a form of moderate antidote. Environmental justice requires that we, as individuals, make personal and consumer choices to consume as little of Mother Earth Earth's resources and make de the conscious decision to challenge and reprioritize our lifestyles to ensure the health of the natural world for present and future generations. The individualization of the approach to solutions form forms a contrast to the systematic and holistically based criticism of corporatism and colonial traces in modern economies. Further, the Declaration of, does not discuss markets, capitalism, or market mechanisms pointing to an overall positive evaluation of smaller scale economies function beyond or function with a benevolent type of consumer behavior. The approach of the Declaration is deliberate attempt to form alliances between traditionally and relatively separate activist issues of environmentalism, animal protection, religion, justice, and economy. The holistic approach seems to have provided broad enough platform to start developing ideas on climate change, even though climate change was not an, it was not an explicit part of the program in 1991 as opposed to CSE. Defining climate justice as a global radical strategy, in 1996, Track started CW as an inter internet and resource center, but later, after a name change to Core Watch, CW replaced Track as the organization's name, Corporate Watch 1997. CW's critical reports succeeded in drawing attention to Nike's production facilities in East Asia, corporate control over the internet, and the concept of greenwashing, I bid, along with other prominent networking organizations on the left, such as Adbut Boosters, CW provided critical reports of the cheap and dangerous labor sustaining large, large brands, which received a lot of attention after the Battle of Seattle, unquote. During the World Trade Organization, WTO, talks in 1999, Klein, 2000, McKagan, 2010. However, CW's work to provide activists with critical resources and about the corporate planet included an ecological criti critique that was not part of the left-wing mainstream rallying at this time. Editorial coordinator at CW, Joshua Carliner, published the book, The Corporate Planet, Ecolog Ecology and Politics in the Age of Globalization, in collaboration with leading environmental NGO Sierra Club in 1997. It documented a number of high-profile campaigns against Exxon, Chevron, and other major oil companies organized by Sierra Club, Greenpeace, and other major NGOs in Africa and North and South America. Carliner, 1997. Parts of Carliner's research became central to the, C to the GGCJ 
report from 1999, providing comprehensively research insights into the political and ecological landscapes left by large oil corporations worldwide. GGCJ uses several pages to define the concept of CJ, weaving together a number of critical strategies into a common program while acknowledging that it remains true that each of us should consume the, le the least resources possible, unquote. The importance of light bulbs and efficient cars is challenged with the with the claim that each of us can join in the effort to hold corporate climate culprits accountable for their role in what may well be the largest environmental justice issue of all time, unquote. Alluding to the struggles of, of local environmental justice campaigns against large polluting companies, the authors coined another important concept of the false solution, unquote, whereby climate justice provides an alternative to the solutions corporations have proposed to the climate problem, false solutions which are divisive, inequitable, and unjust. CW's previous experience of revealing the poor working conditions behind top American brands is utilized to make claims about the discrepancies between the oil's industry green campaigns and their plans to continued pollution despite scientific warnings. This was long before mainstream revelations from researchers and journalists of the industry's sophistication and furthering climate denial. Stance between Orsecchi's and Conway 2010. So the report's stance against any corporate negotiations is an attempt to make sharp distinctions between economic actors and the fight against climate change. In contrast, the CSE has had proposed a green rating project, unquote, in 1997, betting on the effectiveness of increased volume, voluntary improvement and disclosure by industry, unquote, collaboration with the United Nations Develop, Development Program, UNDP. CW commented on the increasing presence of corporations in the UN system with great skepticism and were outspoken critics of Kofi Annan's UN Global Compact from 2000 onwards. Nevertheless, GGCJ cites Nar Narain and Ar Ar Agarwal's work directly on technical issues and adopts several of the points from previous CSE work. Furthermore, C GGCJ adopted a partial definition of CJ that conforms with the approach of CSE. Climate justice means that while all countries should participate in the drastic reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, the industrialized nations, which historically and currently are most responsible for global warming, should lead the transformation. From this broad definition, GGCJ goes on to argue that, ultimately, climate justice means holding fossil fuel corporations accountable for the central role they play in contributing to global warming, unquote. The question of national emissions is reframed as a blame game, unquote, that risk obscuring the political work for global equity, pointing to the inadequacies of the Kyoto Protocol. Quote, any interpretation of equity, the U.S. should double, triple, or quadruple the reduction of almost all other large countries even the wealthiest nations of east of western europe however the authors go on stating that in simple numerical terms china india brazil and a few other developing countries must be part of the solution if climate change is to be prevented unquote while this could be easily interpreted as a similar approach to the wri so heavily criticized by cse gg JC attempted to combine a defense of historical responsibilities with a radical agenda to unite the global North and South against common enemy in a time of urgency. The authors stress the mounting problems in the numerical terms, unquote, stating that emissions are still growing with an increase of 11% between 1990 and the year 2000. Although the overall normative 
assessment placed responsibility for leading the transformation with U.S. corporations and governments. The report implicitly points to limits for reductions deemed realistic in terms of consumption by U.S. citizens. Quote, by any interpretation, interpretation of equity, the U.S. should double, triple, or quadruple the reductions of almost all other large countries, unquote. As a way of oversimplified and extreme national accounting, the direct impediments for the necessary transformation are oil companies along with the international financial institutions who are pushing the development of fossil fuel-based economies in these countries. The strategy for rapid and sustained action to curb climate change is, therefore, to direct a radical critique against the corporations profiting directly from any tardiness in the transition away from fossil fuels. Just solutions and just transition. Bridging these approaches, CW argued for a dual approach encompassed both a global financial flow and local workplace questions of labor. The continued support for fossil fuel extraction from World Bank and WTO necessitated a global CJ struggle for securing finances for equity. In addition, on the local or national level, CJ would foster a just transition. Transition um, places the report firmly in the economic debate between North America unions and the environmental justice movement that had been taken place since the 1970s. The authors highlight basis of union support and resistance to finding new ways of stopping polluting industries of the former. The report emphasizes the adoption in 1997 of Just Transition as official policy among a number of Canadian union groups and the growing support in the U.S. for a similar scheme. Importantly, the report focuses on existing nascent attempts at formally forming alliances between environmental justice groups, indigenous and international union networks. This means that the authors found great potential for expanding this collaboration into a corporation on CJ, going from instances of local struggles and solutions to global ones. As I will elucidate, Below, this only became mainstream union politics from the late 2000s and with a much less radical economic approach than the potential CW had seen. As an extension of the strategic expansion of the meaning of the just transition, the focus in the report's final part is on the de democratization of production and resources in the energy industry, regulating not just how a company produces something, but rather what the, that company produces is an important step toward greater democratic control over co corporations. When applied to climate change, this approach might manifest itself in government re requirements that oil companies invest truly significant amounts of money in developing ecological sound energy and employment alternatives. A just transition concretely requires new sources of finance for both jobs and alternative energy resources. However, it is clear that the authors more generally see the status of the corporations in the U.S., their status of personhood, their access to government bodies and subsidies as a systematic problems that withheld holds a sustainable transformation of society. As part of the argumentation for higher levels of democratic control, GGCJ mentioned the Cool, cool the Planet unquote, campaign based at many universities across the U.S. and aiming to pressure their schools to divest their, their holdings in members of the Global Climate Coalition, unquote, Cool the Planet was announced in 1999 as part of the Oz of Ozone Action, a Washington corporate critical organization addressing two atmospheric threats, global climate change and stratospheric ozone depletion. As ratification of the Montreal Protocol had spread the most to most major economies by the end of the 1990s, the focus on climate change became stronger for the ozone action, providing informal, informal, 
uh, information campaigns and supporting the cool the planet, unquote. Group to organize divestment campaign on 35 universities U.S. Wide Cool the Planet 2000. In August 2000, Cool the Planet, unquote, claimed that the student divestment campaigns dismantled the leading corporate lobbying group fighting solutions to global warming, the Global Climate Coalition by forcing corporations like Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Texaco, Daimler, Chrysler, and Southern Company to defect and from the G... GCC, this spelled out the biggest student victory over dirty corporations since the Home Depot campaign. The next step for Cool the Planet and Ozone Action was to organize delegation of students to go to the COP6 meeting in The Hague. As we shall see in the following section, this delegation became part of the first CJ gathering to explicitly de present itself under the banner of, C of a CJ campaign. This adds to the centra centrality of divestment, specifically and economic issues more generally in the development of a radical U.S. approach to climate change. Linferna, 2018. However, it would be most, almost another decade before divestment became a centerpiece for CJ mobilization, as I will return below to below. While on one on the one hand, the authors of GGCJ are eager to provide solidarity with environmental justice campaigns with a local and on the ground approach, they highlight the ne necessity of a universal approach to ending the dominance of the oil industry. As such, the calls from organizations worldwide for a moratorium on all new oil, oil exploration receives strong support while the other end of the spectrum measures to oppose destruction at every step of the production and distribution process. Among the groups mentioned behind the, these claims are the Oil Watch Network Environmental Rights Action Greenpeace, Rainforest Action Network Project Underground, Institute for Policy Studies, Asesian Ecologica, Bruno ETL, 1997. The moratorium is an idea fostered in concrete struggles against oil companies, but the GGCJ interprets it on a global scale as a, quote, long-term necessity for society to wean itself eventually off fossil fuels, unquote. This is an attempt at making connection between the point of extraction and the power of fossil makers, Markets and marketing highlights highlighted throughout the report. Following this logic, a market-based solution as per the Clean Development Mechanism, CDM, is thoroughly rejected, marking a very different path for economic justice in re relation to climate change than what had been proposed by CSE. Climate justice becomes activism and system critique. According to the account of CW, the publication of GGCJ led to a wider climate justice in initiative, which included the coordination of the first climate justice summit in the Hague of, in conjunction with the Kyoto Protocol meetings, COP6 in 2000, gathering 500 environmental justice leaders. The driving role of CW is confirmed by research Literature, Roberts, 2007-294, Toker, 2014. However, the success of the two-day CJ Summit seems to have deeply de dependent on the organization, organizing activities during the fall, the full duration of the COP by Rising Tide, RT, a newly formed London-based radical network referring directly to the research and conceptualization of GGCJ, RT was the center point for direct action in the name of CJ Toker, 2014, an activist pamphlet gathered by anonymous activist editors before and after the COP6 quoted an RT spokesperson for pointing out the importance of making a strong connection between climate change and economic concepts. Actions will peak at the UN Climate Conference in November in the 
Hague, the Netherlands, a lot of people are realizing inequality and climate change are both consequences of the con current economic system. Different move activist movements are converging. Dissenting voices. Climate Talks 2000. The activists during the COP6 place CW ideas on CJ on the context of a larger activist success that drew upon increased knowledge about the dangers of climate change and a widespread critique of the interplay between multilateral negotiations, corporate power, and the proposed economic mechanisms. Parks and Roberts, 2010. Jennifer Hayden, ATL, 2014, documented that the number of contentious events counting 29 and separate protests surrounding the Hague COP meeting had only been surprised by Copenhagen with 77 and 9 respectively until 2012. Hayden argues that contentious activities at the Hague in 2000 can be interpreted as a strong case of intermovement spillover because the adoption of protest techniques from the protest against the WTO meeting in Seattle in 1999, Hayden ETL 2014. From the analysis of the ideas gathered and disseminated in GGCJ, it is clear that this spillover it also re rested upon an active reconceptualization of the struggles taken place politically, scientifically, and environmentally since the early 1990s, central to the creation of the RT network oh, ahead of the COP6, was the agreement reached around the political statement among a large number of activists and NGOs, including Friends of the Earth and many other environmental justice organizations, Roberts and Parks, 2009-395. This included a number of principles in which the emphasis of economic mechanisms echoed CSE and GGCJ in the d disbelief of global management of atmospheric CO2 concentrations in a way that would include economic justice. Rising Tide is a coalition of groups and individuals committed to a grassroots approach to fighting climate change. The coalition believes that the official United Nations UN negotiations are failing to resolve the climate change crisis. Instead, global equity and the environment are being marginalized by the do dominance of corporate interests. RT advocated for the payment of the ecological debt, unquote, owed by a historical polluters who are responsible historically for its climate change causes. Apart from rich countries not considering historically responsible, R RT's reason for skepticism towards the management lay with the poverty of the ambitions. RT claimed that a minimum of 60% immediate reduction of carbon emissions was necessary in the short term and criticized uh, the official assessment of Kyoto projections to provide a reduction of 5.2% 2010 to 2012. The statement fears that any solution proposed by UN will be undermined by the processes of economic globalization. Unquote. These processes are clearly seen as increased by the assertion of the transnational corporations are overrepresented at the UN meetings at the ex expense of developing nations, island states, local communities, indigenous peoples. In summary, RT supported a moratorium on fossil fuel exploration, a curbing of overconsumption, and a per capita al allocation of carbon emissions for everyone, unquote. RT listed as main problems, nuclear energy, carbon trading, and the misuse of the carbon in the trees is as an offsetting mechanism. The resistance to carbon tr trading as a new way of creating or upholding large profits was central to the direct actions of RT during the COP6. A group of activists broke into the conference center hosting the negotiations of this national delegations in an act of transgressive activism which included paint bombs, climbing raptors, and minor sabotage. Hayden, 2015-47. The messages delivered were directed against carbon trading and the influence of, carb of corporate logic over the process. 
Reports from activists mention spoken messages as, quote, there is no such thing as a market-based solution. Really? I'm so sorry about that. I don't know why these papers keep sticking together. Okay. To a market down market based problem, unquote, and spread of banners and flyers reading profits of doom and carbon trading. Equal profit, yes, minus future, no, unquote. Dissent dissenting voices climate talks two thousand. Overall, it is clear that the economic critique of ongoing negotiations on global climate policy was a strong point for political mobilization in 2000, while a number of the organizations behind RT were anti-capitalist in their individual aims. The communication and protests made public around the mobilization for CJ focused specifically on res resistance to the activists of large transnational oil and gas corporations worldwide. As for the outcome of this turn of act to activism, it is important to note the argument against the current economic system quoted above was from inside the RT organization. The notion of system failure was coming to the fore in the early 2000s linked both the economic and ecological frames of understanding while the notion of system analysis and ecosystems had been central to 1970s and 1980s debates on limits to growth and ecological stability barons three etl 1972 holding 1973 the systematic ethics were still mainly regarded as a result of the problematic influence of corporate profit interests into political negotiations however while exposing the false solutions Unquote, and complex trading systems in an ecological context, key factors were key to were keen to engage with the question of how to provide better answers. CW's Joshua Carliner interviewed different actors after the summit. Quote, by resisting new oil projects in their lands, unquote, observes Ivan Yanez of Oil Watch International and Ecuador based networking fighting oil development in the tropics, people like the Cafeans in Ecuador, the Ija in the Nigeria, and the Yuwa in Colombia are going forward faster than our governments in creating a true clean development mechanism, unquote. Carliner, 2000. The message was that the most radical ideas for true solutions would come from groups and regions with strong environmental justice movements and close encounters with the close encounters oh sorry develop national policy okay strong environmental justice movements and close encounters with the methods and pollution of the oil companies for oil watch this had resulted in the broad scheme for a moratorium on oil an idea that was further developed into national policy with the Yasani ITT project launched in 2007, as discussed below. Apart from the on-the-ground on experiences, CW's reports also showed optimism for data-driven opposition to large corporations and fact-based removal of false solutions from the planning within the COP system. This was a question of the types of knowledge that should guide the negotiations and the economic side of, of the solutions. Eliminate conference delegates continue to ignore the issue of curtailing oil production and exploration, despite the fact that just burning all current oil reserves will most likely lead to ecological dis catastrophe. Statistics show that when burned, the oil a company like Shell Producers is responsible for ha as much CO2 as the entire Central American region. And Exxon's mobile production accounts for nearly as many emissions as all of Africa, according to the data from environmental groups, Coloner 2000. The use of statistics and strengthening arguments for the connection between specific economic activities and the proportions of ecological destruction was part of a broader tendency for CJ organizers to campaign around research results produced by political ecologists corporating <clears throat> 
cooperating with local environmental justice and organizations. Martinez, a liar, 2014. Bringing the economy back to the roots. The idea discussed in The Hague during the climate change, I'm sorry, climate summit marked the beginnings of similar discussions globally with the establishment of the International Climate Justice Network. Unquote. The spokesperson for the network was Amit Stava, who had been CW staff until beginning part of the India Reserve Resource Center in 2002, indicating the continuity of the in initiative's International Climate Justice Network 2002, following debates in an expanded group of international organizations during the preparatory negotiations in Bali 2002 for World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg. That year, a set of climate justice principles were, were published online. The organizations gathered included CW, Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace, Indigenous Environmental Network, Oil Watch, Ukrainian NGO, World Rainforest Movement, as well as organizations from India, Kenya, South Africa, and Malaysia. The release of the principles stated explicitly that they adopt, adopted using the environmental justice principles developed at the 1991 People of Color Environmental Justice Leadership Summit as a blueprint. The, this underlined the con connection to environmental justice EJ movement, but significantly expanded them to both encompass a global perspective and the technical sides of climate change, which had not been part of the 1991 summit. However, the conceptual framing of the post-cell principles underlines the fact that indigenous groups in the global north were aligning themselves with groups in the global south sharing both the spiritual reference to Mother Earth and a radicalized approach promoting emissions equity and opposing corporate power in the negotiations and the pollution from, the, from growing fossil-based production. The principles contained 18 sets of problem statements related to climate change in a preamble, of which more than half mention economic categories as production, consumption, inequity, livelihoods, banking, finance, markets, and corporations. The focus of the preamble's problem analyze, analysis is the vulnerability of local communities, women, youth, indigenous peoples, as well as general health issues, and the heightened frequency of disasters in the global south, especially the 27 principles provide further definitions of CJ to provide an answer to these problems and the result can largely be read as a political program emerging on the basis of POSEL, CSE's 1991 report, Oil Watch's work for moratorium, and CW's attempt to provide a global framework. Principle number two underlines the need to reduce with an aim to eliminate the production of greenhouse gases directly connected to number 10, calling for a moratorium on all new fossil fuel exploration and exploitation. Number four argues for the necessity of a, pub, of a principle of a common but differentiated responsibilities to address climate change democratically. The concept of ecological debt is mentioned in number eight as a demand to extractive industries liable for all past and current life cycle impacts relating to the production of greenhouse gases, unquote, significantly neither nation na states nor the global north are mentioned directly, although ecological debt is asserted in principle number nine as a right to receive full compensation, restoration, and reparation for loss of land, livelihood, and other damages, unquote. Therefore, there is less importance placed upon what I'm sorry. Number nine is the right to receive full compensation, restoration, and reparation for loss of land, livelihood, and other damages, unquote. Therefore, there is less importance placed upon what is termed as 
termed the blame game, unquote, in GGCJ, but does not itself in itself provide a radicalized approach to sustainable financing that could transcend national competition and interests. That is, the principles insist ecological debt caused by industrialized nations of the global north, but the payment hereof is held unspecified, thus open for further sophistication following the CW's argument in 1999. In contrast, Principle 13 is very clear in its opposition to any market-based or technological solution to climate change, such as carbon trading and carbon sequestration that should be subject to principles of democratic accountability, ecological sustainability, and social justice, while number 11 and number 15 calls for the implementation of clean, renewable, locally controlled energy sources that do not externalize costs to the environment and communities and are in line with the principles of a just transition. End quote. Finally, in number 26, the emphasis on consumer choices and lifestyles has survived as a principle from the POECL, but has expanded with an emphasis on clean, renewable, low impact energy. End quote. Following the publication of the Bali Principles, the India Climate Justice Forum held in October 2002 during the COP8 in Delhi reiterated many of its ideas. A final statement, Delhi Climate Justice Declaration presented a shorter version of the principles that largely resemble the preamble of the Bali principles. Absent was the framing around protection of Mother Earth, but the economic questions of equity, unsus unsustainable production and consumption, food sovereignty, and market principles dominate the short text. The final point, which was the original, was original uh, compared to the Bali principles, even repeats and dramatizes the rejection of the market-based principles that guide the current negotiations to solve the climate crisis. Our world is not for sale. The context for the production of the principles, however, was more grassroots oriented than Bali. And according to CW, 1,500 participants from 17 states in India, over 20 countries, and comprising mostly of farmers, fish workers, the poor, indigenous peoples, Dalits, youth, unquote, joining a climate justice summit, Core Watch 2002. Furthermore, there were large protests surrounding the negotiation negotiating area. CW reports that more than 5,000 people joined a rally through the streets of Delhi and from the Gandhi Memorial to the site of the UN negotiation, but negotiations, photos from the event show banners demanding climate justice, making it the first major, major public rally for CJ demands. Costiger, 2002. Professionalism against CDM and re-radicalization. Having established the notion of CJ, globally it increasingly became clear to different actors that there were conflicts the can and for furthermore the these conflicts were mainly about the interpretation of economic mechanisms in Kyoto agreement which was entered into operation by the mid 2000s according to Hayden can leadership interpreted at the dissatisfaction from organizations behind supporting the ideas behind CJ was mainly about organizational asymmetries behind North and South in terms of decision making. The conflict over C the CDM was stepped up in 2004 with the establishment of the Dur Durban Group for Climate Justice that gathered around the Durban Declaration in Carbon Trading, issued the same year. Among the most visible organizers and contributors was American-based NGO Transnational Institute, operating through a newly founded branch called the Carbon Trade Watch and the Indigenous Environmental Network. Uh, the signatories included organizations from all countries, a testament to the efforts made earlier by CJ declarations to claim a truly global presence of an the anti-carbon trade arguments. 
with 168 organizations and another 150 individual academics, politicians, and organizers signing, the statement was a full-on attack of the CDM and similar private se sector trading schemes, unquote, that were deemed total waste of time when the world has a critical climate crisis to address, unquote, German Declaration on Carbon Trading 2004. The reference of the time frame signals a sensitivity to the reports on concentrations of GHG in the atmosphere from climate scientists. The projections of the needed reductions to keep the atmospheric con concentration of CO2 below the 350 ppm were beginning to indicate the necessity of a sharper global decline after a few years of unprecedented increases of emissions from China. The Durban Group remained active for several years after organizing a world tour of experts as late as 2008, which included organ original signatories such as Carbon Trade Watch and researchers such as Patrick Bont and Larry Lohman testifying to the advanced level of economic analysis behind the initiative Rising Tide North America 2008. It further marked the profession professionalism of the battle against carbon trading as the Kyoto Protocol began to be enforced in 2005. The need for continuous organization around broader pr principles for a large number of organizations arguing for CJ became clear with the creation of the Climate Justice Now, CJN, network formed in Bali during the COP 13 in 2007. A political statement was issued with much fewer individual points and a more fundamental approaching approach to changing basic economic conditions and facing the threat of climate change. The brief problem statement used the language of GGCJ to protest against false solutions that included trade liberalization privatization, forest carbon markets, agrofuels, and carbon offsetting, unquote. The culprit was rich industrialized countries, unquote, and the direct reference to fossil corporations was used earlier was not present, rather than the tiptoe approach to the blame game. One of the statement's main demands is a call for huge financial transfers from north to south based on the repayment of climate debts, unquote, by redirecting military budgets, innovative taxes, and debt cancellation, Climate Justice Now 2008. This was a direct approach to national budgets and fiscal systems of the rich countries and innovation in terms of CJ, CJ statements. Echoing earlier CJ programs, however, was an aim to hinder new oil productions. But the rhetoric of the moratorium was replaced by a more stringent demand to keep fossil fuels in the ground, unquote, and investing instead in energy efficiency and safe, clean, and community-led re renewable energy. Finally, the re re references to personal and consumer choices visible already in the post cell in 1991 is replaced by the aim of radically reducing wasteful consumption, especially in the North, but also among Southern elites. This will be the end of part one on climate justice. Thank you.